For at TV, the world is thinking. Now, when we finished sequencing the human genome, uh, many people were hoping I would retire, uh, but instead uh, we, we looked around for what we thought were the most important projects in science uh, to do, particularly with what the technology that we developed for reading the genetic code could try and tackle. And it was clear to us that trying to look at the environment, uh, not only the extensive environment around us that helps influence our genes, but the broader environment, uh, to see if we could use DNA sequence as the new tool to see uh, who we were sharing the planet with. Uh, there's been this statistic for a long time that each milliliter of seawater has a million bacteria and 10 million viruses. Uh, but nobody really knew uh, what that meant and whether there was any diversity in that. And so we decided to do an experiment in the uh, Sargasso Sea, just taking a barrel of seawater filtering out all the organisms in it, isolating the DNA from them en masse and sequencing it. And just from one uh, a barrel of water, uh, we stopped sequencing after we had uh, close to 1.4 million new genes. Uh, maybe it's 40,000 new species that had never been seen before. Uh, so the technique obviously worked because, in fact, people thought we'd find little or no life uh, in their Sargasso Sea because it was supposed to be a desert uh, with no nutrients in it. Uh, and I'll show you why and how these organisms survived in a minute, but we decided to look further and we started the Sorcerer 2 expedition. Uh, I'd always been looking for an excuse to sail around the world on, on my own vessel. Um, and so we decided we would follow great scientific expeditions such as the Challenger expedition and sail around the world taking samples every 200 miles and sequencing everything we could find uh, to see if we could generate a different view of life. Uh, and we were absolutely stunned with what we found, and that was a special issue of PLOS that was published last year. This is the route that we followed. Uh, as with the Challenger expedition, we started in Halifax, uh, went down the eastern uh, seaboard uh, into the Caribbean Sea, uh, then down between Mexico and Cuba to the Panama Canal, uh, through the Panama Canal and uh, down to uh, first Cocos Island uh, and then to the Galapagos. And, and that's the, uh, the dot you see here in blue. That's what uh, was covered in the special issue of PLOS uh, of biology. Um, and that covered over six million new genes, more than doubling the number uh, of genes known from all science uh, up to that point. And we've now been analyzing the samples uh, from the rest of the globe. Uh, after Galapagos, we left and uh, sailed uh, to the Marquesias, uh, where we were promptly arrested um, because there was a, a debate between the French government and the French Polynesian government as who had rights over the microbes that are there. And you, you, you may not understand this, but uh, uh, this is, this is a, a, a physical map. If you look at a political map, in the Caribbean Sea, for example, there's no international waters. Every drop of water is claimed by one or more countries, and you need permission from them to take a scientific sample. They're, they're, it's okay to fish in most of those places. You can uh, you know, shoot marine mammals. You can do whatever you want. But if you're asking scientific questions, it's considered extremely dangerous, um, uh, and you can get arrested for it. Um, uh, in, in fact, when uh, the organisms in the ocean are out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, they're in international waters and they belong to nobody or to everybody. As soon as the one knot current that goes across the Pacific carries them into French Polynesia, uh, all those microbes instantly become French genetic heritage. Uh, and. Uh, and they're willing to defend it um, uh, to, to the extreme. Um, we, we finally got out of there and took samples and spent some time in Australia, then went across the Indian Ocean. Uh, we got halfway across and we stopped in uh, uh, Chagos Island, uh, which is near uh, where uh, our country has a, a B-52 air base, and we were arrested again uh, by the British this time because they were worried we would take uh, uh, samples and understand uh, science in that water. Um, 
So science is something and organisms that are, are, are greatly protected around the world. And uh, uh, to be able to publish this data in the public databases, we had to put uh, geographic uh, GPS coordinates on every uh, DNA sequence. Uh, so for example, uh, uh, if somebody makes a discovery using the sequences that we found in Australia, uh, and you want to commercialize those, you have to contact the Australian government and negotiate something. It's not clear what. Um, so science is it's much more complicated today, but the, the experiments were very simple. We just simply filtered seawater through different size filters. We could then just take those filters, put them in the freezer. Uh, when we got into a port, uh, we put them in a FedEx package with some dry ice and send them back to the lab in, in Rockville, Maryland, where all the DNA was isolated at once from them uh, and sequenced, and then reconstructed in the computer. And when we reconstructed it, uh, we were amazed with what we found. Uh, for example, every 200 miles, 85% of the sequences in the organisms are unique. Uh, the ocean's not a giant homogeneous mixture. Uh, samples that we've taken off of San Francisco Bay uh, will be very different than the ones off of uh, uh, Los Angeles and off of uh, Seattle and Oregon. Uh, in fact, if you look at the, so the red or the dark here, if you're colorblind, is, is uh, warm water. Uh, the blue or light colors is uh, cold water. And even the 3% of sequences that assemble across uh, more than one site they make an absolute distinction between a warm and cold water, and some of these change on an annual uh, basis uh, with weather. Uh, other things that affect it are sunlight but, uh, and nutrients, uh, but we can tell simply from a sample of seawater, uh, looking at the DNA in that water, uh, where uh, that water came from in the world. Um, and for example, with all the ships that come and go from San Francisco Bay, if a tanker comes in, offloads its cargo, it fills up its hold with uh, seawater and will go to its next port, dump all that seawater, uh, and take on new cargo. So look at all the ships that come and go from San Francisco Bay uh, each day, uh, and imagine with a million bacteria and 10 million viruses per milliliter, how these environments are constantly being challenged and shifted.